everybody, welcome back to the channel. HDM here, taking a look at the Gold Road PTS patch notes for the Elder Scrolls Online. Now, obviously, this is the big chapter release for 2024, focused on the new expansion as well as the new scribing feature coming to ESO. But I was surprised to see a fair amount of class changes in this patch and something I wasn't expecting to see at all, and that is werewolf changes. Yeah, a bit of an update for the werewolf and some improvements. So let's jump right into things. They do give us an introduction, which says that the big chapter of the year is upon us, and this one is quite exciting with the addition of scribing. And due to this large feature, as well as following suit of previous years, this update will be on the lighter end in terms of actual combat adjustments. And much of the team has been incredibly hard at work, making sure scribing hits the ground running, and that we have more time to iterate on ability values and bugs during the PTS cycle. For the live combat experience, expect to see mainly bug fixes and iterative work with a small handful of targeted balance changes for some outliers. By the way, if you have not seen it yet, make sure to check out my preview of the new scribing system for ESO. There I talk more in detail about how the new system works, all the different options that we will have. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in this content because I will have much more information on the way. But let's jump right into those changes for combat and abilities. Starting with the Arcanist class, the Herald of the Tome skill, Abyssal Impact is seeing a small change Specifically, the Cephaliarch's Flail Morph. This morph now ranks up in healing per rank, resulting in about a 3% additional bonus to healing at rank 4, rather than reducing its cost per rank, as the morph upgrade does not interact with cost at all and was offering too many unique advantages. So, if you're playing Stamina Arcanist, this is more like a buff for you. You're actually going to get some additional healing, However, if you play Magicka Arcanist and you were relying on this, it is a stamina skill and it's going to cost more stamina in this patch. So it may be slightly more difficult to maintain, like I said, especially on the Magicka Arcanist build, but Arcanist already has pretty great sustain, so I don't think this is going to be a huge issue overall. Moving on to the Dragonite class and Fiery Grip, the Chains of Devastation morph, they fixed an issue where this morph could sometimes cause your character to face the wrong direction. So just a minor bug fix here. No major changes for the Dragonite. Now let's talk about the Necromancer class next. Necro got some of the biggest changes in the last patch. That was update 41. Specifically when it came to Blast Bones, we saw one morph being changed entirely. That's now called Gravelord's Sacrifice. It gives you a buff to your abilities and your damage over time effects. It's no longer really a, a damaging AoE effect. But surprisingly, there's currently no planned adjustments for that ability. We'll talk about that in a second. What they are doing, however, is adding more damage over time to your kit, specifically with Shocking Siphon and its morphs. They increase the damage per tick of this ability and its morphs by about 33%, so they are closer to stationary overtime effects rather than being treated as sticky overtime effects. So more damage here, I think, is really good. It's going to make this skill more beneficial to run on most builds, and it does feel very much like a Necromancer uh, with this type of particular playstyle. They also extended this to Living Death and Restoring Tether. This is a healing and a uh, more of like a utility tether. So they increased the healing per tick of this ability and it's morphed by 14%. So they're closer to the stationary overtime effects rather than being treated halfway between stationary and sticky overtime effects. So I think these changes are pretty good overall for the Necromancer, but is it what players are looking for? I don't know if that's the case. Again, this is just week one of the Gold Road PTS, so we could see some additional changes come. Like I said, I don't think Gravelord Sacrifice is quite in the place where they want it, especially on some of the feedback that I have seen. It would be nice, honestly, if you could just buff with Gravelord Sacrifice normally outside of combat. Where it is now, it feels a bit clunky, right? You have to be in combat, you have to cast the ability, then it has to create the corpse. If you could precast that maybe outside of combat before the fight started, that might make it a little bit easier to use. So like I said, hopefully we'll still see some future adjustments to this skill coming up. Uh, but let's talk about the Nightblade next, which also got a bit of a buff here. So in the Summon Shade skill line, we have Dark Shade. This Morph's Shade now only uses its area of effect attack rather than using it once every five seconds, and then swapping to a single target attack to help add more options for cleave damage in this class. And they also adjusted the visual effects to appear as drain power rather than whirlwind effect. 
to make it feel more appropriate for a Nightblade ability. And that's fine, I think this is a good change overall, giving the Nightblade a little bit more AoE damage. I think the Nightblade kit still is not quite perfect, there's a few additional things they need in terms of damage. It is nice that uh, they are getting some updates though, especially what we saw last patch with the extra sustain that they got, so it does seem like they're on the right track. Now, moving on to Sorcerer and Dark Magic, just a slight change here. Uh, this is actually a passive, so the Blood Magic passive is getting an update. This is basically when you use a Dark Magic ability where you deal damage, you get a slight heal back. Well, this passive now activates when you cast any Dark Magic ability with a cost, rather than when you hit an enemy with a directly applied Dark Magic ability. So previously you would see this proc mostly on like crystal frags or crystal weapon. This is interesting because now you're gonna see it proc on more abilities. You could, for example, get a little bonus healing from Dark Deal whenever you cast that because that's another Dark Magic ability. So not too bad, nothing groundbreaking or game changing, just a nice little quality of life improvement uh, for the Sorcerer. Moving on to Templar next, this is one of the more interesting changes so Blazing Spear, this morph now also causes the initial hit to immobilize enemies hit for four seconds. Now there's a dev comment here, let's check this out. The Templar Tykes have slowly been creeping into the scene as we've tried to find ways to empower their crusade. They're still lacking a definitive and satisfying immobilized tool to help keep control of the battlefield. So it sounds like this update is specifically for Templar tanks, which it is nice, honestly, that Zoss is throwing them a little bone in this patch. The Templar tanks are definitely not in the best position in terms of all, you know, classes for tanking. They're probably more towards the bottom. Now, is this really gonna make a big difference? I don't know if it will. It would be nice if it had some additional secondary effects like maim, uh, vulnerability, something like that that the other classes have that makes tanking more useful on those classes. Uh, just in the mobilize added to this, I don't know if it's gonna be enough. But we also have scribing coming up as well and there's tons of possibilities. Uh, that's the whole point of scribing actually is to fill in those gaps in your toolkit for your class. So we'll see. They also fixed an issue with uh, sun shield and the visual effect and as well with restoring aura fixed an issue where this ability and its more visual effects could fail to appear. Now let's talk about the Warden change because this one is actually a little bit confusing. I saw some posts about this on the forum already, which I believe are incorrect. So uh, Betty Netch, this ability and its morphs now also increases your damage done by 5% for five seconds if no negative effect was removed from the ability. So let's go ahead and read the comment here. In order to keep the Warden's damage production without rocking the boat too much in PVP, we're adding a conditional bonus to mainly activate in PVE. We're also trying to add more sources of damage to their damage focus skill line, which is animal companions, uh, so we can slowly look at shifting damage out of their tanking focus skill line. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, Warden class is kind of strangely set up. They've tried to separate each skill line to be different, so animal companions is for DPS, Winter's Embrace is for tanking, but you do have str some of your strongest damage dealing abilities uh, with those frost damage spells. So yeah, the kit for Warden is a little bit confusing, especially when it comes to DPS. Now, some people were looking at this and saying, well, you know, 5% bonus for five seconds, that's like nothing. You have to cast the ability, that takes a second. This is not really worth it, but I believe the way this works is that the skill removes a negative effect from your character every five seconds and the duration lasts like 20 something seconds. So this isn't like a five second buff, it's a 20 second buff that has a chance to proc this bonus damage every five seconds during the full duration. At least that's how I believe this is supposed to work. A five second buff really doesn't make sense. So I don't think they're gonna do it that way. I think this will last for the full duration of the buff, which is good. So that covers the basic class changes. There are just a couple fixes to uh, bow and soul magic. I'm not gonna worry about those too much. Let's talk about the werewolf update Pretty unexpected for this patch, but kind of nice actually when you look over the specific changes. First up for your Werewolf Transformation Ultimate, your light and heavy attacks now deal bleed damage rather than physical damage. That also means they're going to have a chance to apply the hemorrhaging status effects. So light attacks have a 3% chance, partial charge heavy attacks have 5%, and fully charged Heavy attacks have a 10% chance for hemorrhaging, which is not bad. So the developer comment says here that lacking a second ability bar, those with the beast within themselves have a harder time interacting with status effects 
and have fallen a bit further behind in damage production. So the goal is to make their build path slightly more diverse with status effect chance being a bit more enticing. So there you go. Basic attacks now cause bleed damage. Uh, the roar ability is also getting changed. So this ability and ferocious roar now apply a unique debuff called terrified for 10 seconds. Terrified doesn't do anything outright other than place a tracking effect on enemies to help werewolves mark their prey. Now this is really interesting and it does kind of fulfill like the theme of the werewolf as this type of hunter, which I actually really like. Now I haven't been able to log in yet to see what the visual effect looks like. Hopefully it's something that's easy to see, especially in more chaotic combat, but we'll see why this is useful in a second. Now, Deafening Roar, this morph now grants major protection for slotting rather than your crit buffs, major prophecy and savagery. And while slotted, it also causes your heavy attacks to taunt enemies for 15 seconds. So a bit of a change up here, especially if you wanted to tank on a werewolf build. And this actually goes way back to the Tormentor fix that we had previously. So since that fix to Tormentor, they're adding some love back to the werewolf with a simple way to gain a taunt. That's that heavy attack while differentiating the morphs here further for those who wish to lead the pack versus those who just want to go berserk. So again, separating with the tank focus werewolf versus DPS, that's the whole idea here. And then piercing howl, uh, this has a different interaction as well. So this ability and its morphs no longer deal 10% bonus damage to enemies that are facing them and instead deal 10% bonus damage to enemies that are terrified. So that's where that terrified debuff is going to come into play. You also get bonus damage to your main DPS skill, Piercing Howl. And then with the Howl of Agony morph, this morph now adds an additional 10% bonus damage to off-balance enemies, stacking up to 20%. So you can have both the off-balance bonus and terrified, rather than uh, just the flat 25% to enemies that are facing you or are feared. This morph also now ranks up with cost reduction rather than ranking up the bonus damage effect. And then the Howl of Despair morph, they extended the duration of the buffs gained by Feeding Frenzy to 20 seconds up from 10. So one final comment here. We heard from werewolf players that have been struggling to engage with these abilities, bonus effects. So we're changing things up to allow more interaction between PVE and PVP play styles while simultaneously adding more reasons to use all of your werewolf abilities or work together with other werewolves to set the pack up for success. So really interesting changes overall. I do like the fact that they sort of made up for the Tormentor nerf, at least in theory, because now you can heavy attack and do a taunt uh, on your werewolf tank. You don't need to waste an entire five piece set, which is pretty nice. Heavy attacks are also free to cast obviously and restore resources. Though the Werewolf Heavy Attack is one of the slowest in the game, so I could see that being a bit problematic, but every build has its trade-offs. But yeah, what do you guys think of these Werewolf changes? Let us know down in the comments section below. Also, if you think anything else was missing from the overall class changes, I'd be curious what you think about that as well. But if you found the video helpful, make sure to crush that like button. Make sure you're subscribed for future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you around in the next one.